Okay, good. Recording's on. We'll get started now. Welcome everybody to Digital Marketing at CSTU. We're really happy to do this course. It's a, um, it's a lot of fun. It's also a really interesting course and it's also very practical. CSTU is California State, I'm sorry, California, California Science and Technology University here in Silicon Valley. Uh, my name is Andreas and I'm the instructor for this course in Digital Marketing. So first of all, really short, a copyright message. message. Um, don't share or distribute the files without permission, but you're welcome to use them for yourself. Okay, real quick, what we'll cover today. Folks, at any time, interrupt, okay? Let me ask me questions, um, ask whatever you like about what I'm showing on the screen or other questions. So we'll cover today. This is a two hour class special. Next time is three hours, but today is two hours. One or two slides about me, really short. And then a few slides about how we're going to do this class, how it's going to work, okay? And then a few slides, what we're going to cover in this course. is keyword research and Google AdWords, Google Analytics, and all sorts of things. And then finally, the last hour and a half or so, excuse me, keyword research itself, which is today's class. So really quick about me. I've done three startups and I'm on startup number four now. <laughs> I'm working a, as the CMO for Lingolet. It's a small startup here. You see the logo in the uh, center here. Lingolet is a uh, small IoT devices company. I've also done three ad agencies. I built several ad agencies and I ran the ad agencies. Uh, I have over 350 clients in the last 20 years here in Silicon Valley. So I work on everything from really large corporations, $50 billion company, all the way down to one person, two person operations, um, family restaurants, startups and everything, and everything in between in every field possible. So I will, no matter what, ask a question, either I've done it or I can answer about it. I'm the adjunct professor of digital marketing here at CSTU. I'm also the professor at INSEC University, the large French University, 22,000 students in France, which students worldwide. So every week, once or twice a week, I teach classes to students in France, Africa, uh, the Southern Pacific, and wherever French are. I also teach at the DMA. The DMA is the Direct Marketing Association, the DMA NC, and I teach classes once or twice a week across the US for their certification in digital marketing. I have three clients. I only have three clients. I only want three clients. <laughs> um, you've heard of them, Harvard, Stanford, MIT. I do digital marketing for all three, for Harvard Medical, Stanford Medical, and for MIT Open Courseware. I worked at Axiom, which one is one of the mega marketing companies of the world. They only handle, handle the 200 largest companies in the world. Then I also work at Cisco, where I was the head of global SEO for several years. Um, I did 44 languages in 84 countries. And like I said, now I'm CMO of Lingolet, a small startup here in Silicon Valley. I've written a lot of books about digital marketing. Here's a cover of a few of them. Um, I've done, I think, 16 books. And I'm working on book number 17 now. That'll come out this summer. I'll send you guys a free copy. And then a bunch of those are Amazon number one bestsellers. And then my website is address.com. Professor? Yes. Hoppla. I don't know if uh, you were showing, you were sharing your screen with us, but Ooh, we, could, it we, we, we couldn't see anything. Oh my God. It's supposed to show up. It was showing up. Hang on. Yeah. So if you could uh, go back from beginning, because yes. you, you mentioned about yourself. Yes. Yeah. We can see it now. What can you see? Do you see my picture? Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Oh, that's really good. Thank you so much for telling me that. I'm really sure. sorry, folks. You gotta give me feedback, all right? Let me go back to that slide real quick. Cover slide, copyright slide, overview about me, and the picture of me and the stuff I'm doing. Hey, thank you so much for letting me know. Anything that doesn't work, let me know right away, okay? So picture of me, Helen, and my cat, okay? 
feedback. Feedback. Now the feedback slide. Great. Um, let me know if things don't work well. If I talk too fast, let me know. Just say slow down too fast. If I use too many acronyms or Silicon Valley words, if I talk, talk about POCs and PIO and stuff like that, let me know. I'm so used to Silicon Valley words and I use them too much. So anything, if I say something you don't understand, just say so. Um, you can speak up or in the, in the chat box, send a private message to me, only I see it. Don't worry that um, other people might think it's a, a dumb question or a silly question. Ask anything, okay? Every question is good. Um, ask me questions about what's on the screen, what I'm talking about, but you can also ask questions about other things. Um, what I said before, or if you have a question about something else, or about a project you're working with, something you're doing, okay? And also not just something about digital marketing, about Silicon Valley, anything digital, I'll try to answer. So any questions? Are we good? So about this class, a few slides about how we do classes, okay? On Zoom, I need to update that. That's the old URL. I'll update that, let me make a note of that. I have a clipboard here and I update stuff. We use Slack for our conversation, okay? You will get access to that. Um, the files will be on the Google Share Drive. I put recordings of the um, this uh, video, but also the PowerPoints, eBooks, all sorts of stuff. Saturdays, 1.30 to 4.30, three hours. Um, today is two hours. And today we'll have a break in between, but on next time it'll be a break around one and a half hours. 15 minute break at 3 p.m. Let's see um, every Saturday from June 27th to late August 15th, straight through, including 4th of July next week, okay? Because of Corona, we're not going anywhere. I get online here on Zoom early, about half an hour before. So if you want, join half an hour before, ask questions, talk, say hello, hang out. And after class, I'll also stay on Zoom, answer questions, and talk about stuff. I'm gonna ask questions about your projects, your company, and stuff like that, okay? And then of course, uh, my tech phone, my, my cell phone tech message at the very bottom, 483-5040, ask questions anytime. I'll answer, ask questions middle of the week, at night, whatever, I'll get around to answering, okay? But best way to answer, ask questions is Slack, because then I will see your questions Slack. All you need for this class is very little. Just a laptop, a pencil, piece of paper. That's basically it. Um, no, you don't have to pay for tools, okay? I'll show you, I, I focus on free tools and I tell you about some paid tools, but the free tools are good enough. A Gmail account is really necessary. You need a Google account to sign into Google Analytics and Search Console and things like that. Spreadsheet, if you can, Microsoft Spreadsheet, but the Google Spreadsheet works well enough. Okay, and that's basically it in what you need for this class. It would be a good idea to set up a small account in, in, I'm sorry, in AdWords, in Google Ads. And you don't have to spend very much, just um, 10 or $20, learn how it works, because it's a lot easier you try it than reading about it. And if you set up Google Ads and add Google Analytics, you get $100 in free credit from Google ads, okay? So the first $100 is free by Google Ads. You try that to learn how to write ads and so on. But that's basically all you need. Working in teams, you guys are welcome to work by yourself or work together with other people in the class. You can put together your own team and work together, okay? It's quite fine. It works actually work better if you're in a team because you talk about things, you learn from each other and just it works better. I've noticed in all the classes I teach that teams work out better. Use Slack to talk about it as a team, but also talk to the other, other students because you can ask a question and either I know or somebody else knows and somebody, somebody's always able, able to answer. Let's see. Your goal, why this class? Number one goal for many people, get a job. Okay, be really honest, get a job, make money, 
get a better job. Your first year, second year marketing person at a company, you want to go up to manager level or from manager, manager to director, or you working at a large company, join a startup. So get a job in the first place or get a better job. You just graduate from college, you want a better job um, or make more money. I'll give you a reference letter. So if you're looking to apply for a job, you need a reference letter, let me know. And I'll write you a reference letter and say, yes, you're in my class and um, I'll, I'll say how, how good you're doing in class, okay? The best way to learn things, to do stuff. Theory is nice, reality is far better. So practice stuff um, as much as you can. Don't just read about it, try it yourself. And when you try things, if we, if you don't see how it works, ask me, okay? So that means use your startup. If you're doing a startup or you're thinking of doing a startup, a project, try it with that, okay? For your company where you're working at or another company, your clients and so on, a friend who has a company, say, you do the digital marketing for them just so you can learn it. You do it for a small business, a local restaurant is fine, a flower shop, Really small business, that's fine, that works. Nonprofits, that's really easy because they need help. You contact a nonprofit, you say you're gonna do this for them, they'll say, yes, please help us, okay? Um, maybe they pay you, maybe they don't pay you, it doesn't matter, you get the experience. Church groups, many do this for their church and that works really well too. Churches in a way are like small companies with 100 people, 100, 200 members, and they need more marketing. Like I said, startups, that's really good. I think companies, anywhere from small company, mid-size and large. By mid-size, I mean 50 million in revenue, upwards to several hundred million. And then large companies, generally about 1 billion up to 100 billion or more. You guys will be surprised. The bigger the company, the more help they need. The bigger the company, the bigger the mess. The, the more chaos there is in marketing because it's simply so big and so complex, okay? The note at the bottom, I always try to put notes in the slides. This is your class, really important. Not my class, your class. What you want, that's what I want. So tell me if you want something. If I'm talking about something, it's not relevant to you, let me know, okay? If you want to know more about something, let me know. Want to know about something else, let me know, okay? If you think, um, hey, we should talk more about video, more about TikTok, let me know. We'll look into that, okay? So whatever you guys need, let me know. Any questions? Speak up. <laughs> Class last year, some of you recognize many people. Um, this last year, we had a great class, and we even ended up with a party at my house afterwards. That was a lot of fun. This year, regrettably, because of Corona, we can't do that. It's too bad. Uh, who knows, maybe by the end of summer, it will get better. But anyway, um, many people from last year were still in touch. We talked to each other quite a bit. And some of these went on to get really good jobs. So that's really important for us to get to know each other as much as possible and talk together. The handouts, okay. Um, PowerPoints, you get, there are seven classes, three hours each. You'll get PowerPoints for all of them. Okay, PowerPoints or PDF format. Audio recording and video. So what you see on the screen with my voice and other people asking, asking questions, that's all recorded. It'll be available in the shared drive at Google. So you can download that, have it on your computer, listen to it later, go back over again. Or if you have an appointment during one class, that's okay, you can listen to it later. I'll give you guys Excel spreadsheets that help you a great deal with SEO, uh, KPIs and things like that, meta tags. Um, the ones I had from last year are much better now because we simply have more experience. More people ask questions and they, got, they simply got better and better. Plus also you guys will see um, Danny and others who were here last year, the slides this year are yet better because I simply taught the class so many times. I'll give you guys checklists for SEO, for Google ads, for analytics and so on. And then ebooks, like you see here on the screen, I've written a bunch of ebooks, there are many more. I'll put those in the shared drive, you can download those. Those are all PDFs, 
you can have them, okay? If you miss a class, that's okay. Let me know um, afterwards and we'll figure out some way of catching up. Uh, go to the shared drive, download the video. It'll be up within about 30 minutes, one hour after class, we'll have the shared video up, okay? And it takes some, a bit of time for um, Zoom to process the video. Then we upload it, you can download it, watch it whenever you want. And then if you have questions, contact me in Slack, okay? So like I said, seven classes, seven modules. So really quickly, we'll go through those. Today's module, keywords. What are keywords? Why use keywords? How to find keywords? Really um, straightforward. I'll show you 10 ways to find keywords. And then all sorts of information about keywords. You'll see that. Google Analytics. This is a <laughs> at least a six hour class. We're going to do in three hours. Tremendous amount of how to install, configure Google Analytics, plus also how to use Google Analytics. You'll see things like funnels, the different reports, filters, all sorts of things around analytics. It's very detailed, very in, very hands-on. SEO, the same thing, hands-on doing SEO. Why SEO? Deep secrets at Google about SEO, how it works, how Google ranks pages. And once you understand that, you know how to do better SEO. We'll look at how to do meta tags, titles, description, and so on in detail. Plus, of course, the um, spreadsheet for managing all of that, updates how Google actually ranks pages, the internal manuals at Google on ranking pages, and so on, tools like Screaming Frog, how they work, and so on. Plus also what's really cool is SEO for images. New material, um, many things I've learned here in the last half year, um, detailed technical information on how to adjust images for better SEO. The same thing with video. Uh, Google make a really big push on video. I'll show you how to do SEO for video. SEO for mobile, for social, Amazon, and ADA, American Disabilities Act, for your handicap. There's SEO for them as well. Okay. Google Advertising, what used to be called Google AdWords, is now called Google Ads. So how to set up and manage Google Advertising, plus lots and lots of hands-on tips and tricks around that. Social media, how that works, how to use it, how to deal with it, how to track it, and how to understand the data, okay? A lot of information in social media. We look primarily at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Those are the big boys. And nowadays, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. But we also look a little bit at other things, Pinterest, um, WeChat, <laughs> TikTok, and so on. Those are growing really fast, super fast, actually. And email marketing, how that works and how to use it. I'll show you hands-on examples of email marketing campaigns, plus stuff I've learned in the last year, uh, working, doing email for our startup. You see lots of new material there. Email, for many people, it's like, does anybody do email anymore? Isn't that over? Isn't that passe? It's actually still really big especially in the US and Europe. Other parts of the world, not so much, but many parts are using it, especially for corporate email, corporate marketing. If you want to reach out, reach to people at companies, then email is really important. Finally, content marketing, how that works, how to do it, and lots of examples in content marketing, how much it actually costs, what you can do, how to use it, and so on, along with examples of uh, using content marketing, okay? So, summary of the course, we talked a lot about how we're going to do the course and also overview of the material in the courses, what we'll teach, what we'll go through the next eight weeks, okay? The last class, of course, is a uh, presentation. So you can choose your presentation, talk about your project, how you use digital marketing for your project, okay? Um, it's your project, you can structure it any way you like, and we'll work together on that. There's lots of examples in the class of um, how 
things are done at company, real examples and case studies. And you have examples or questions or you, you know about things, let speak up about them. Okay. Great. Any questions so far? Any questions about the material, how we do classes and so on? You type your questions in the uh, in the chat list, either privately to me or to everyone, or you can speak up in voice or turn your video on. Come on, don't be shy. A question, Professor. This is pending. So, is there any available software package to do a digital marketing? Yeah, there are. There are. There is software. There are tools you can you can pay for. Yes, there are free tools out there, but you don't need to buy them for this class. Okay? How how effective are those tools? Ha! Very good question. <laughs> You'll see. I'll show you in a few minutes if they really work or not. Okay, that's a really great question. Folks, be very critical. Paying question is super good. Be very critical. Ask, ask questions about tools. Don't accept what the tools tell you. They want to make money. They really want to make money. So be very skeptical. Paying, that's a great question. And I'll show you in a few minutes if it's effective or not. Okay. Right now, my major, um, my main position is don't pay for tools. The free tools are good enough and there's no real advantage to tools that you pay for. Uh, so better said, I do not see advantage to tool you pay for, okay? Any other questions? Hi, Professor, this is Mary. Um, in what cases do we use digital marketing? Like what kind of business maybe, or what kind of scenarios we use digital marketing? I'm sorry, I don't, I don't quite understand. What, what kind of projects are good for digital marketing? Um, in what cases or what scenarios do we use digital marketing? Ah, okay. Like when will it be applicable or most useful? Very good question. Mary, Mary that really changed in the last few months. Let me go on to that slide here um, and I'll show you that. Okay, that's Mary saw the, pre the next slide. Perfectly good question. Okay, on the right side, in the last 25 years, digital started in 1995. The dot com. The web started in 1995, that's 25 years now. And in many ways, it was optional. You could use digital, but you could also not use it. And many companies, some did, did digital, some used it a bit or a lot, and some did not use it at all. But the last three months changed everything. It really changed in the last three months because of Corona. It, you have to be digital now in almost every case even down to really small companies. And I will show you how to do digital marketing, even for a, a one person flower shop. If you have a little mom and pop business on the street corner, I'll show you how to do digital marketing for that without a big budget, okay? There is way to do that for free. That really works. The really big issue is that now because of Corona, I think the number is somewhere about 75% of people do not go out anymore. Let me see. Let me show you a real example. 75% 75, 75 of people are doing this, okay? They wear, they wear their mask all the time if they go out at all. So most people are staying at home. They're ordering stuff online. They're using digital to do things. So, Restaurants, flower shops, businesses that before people came into the store, now it's all digital. So it becomes super important. Um, lawyers, flower shops, little restaurants, all digital. And of course, any kind of mid-sized company is almost digital. It's really hard to think of example, not digital. Churches, for example, are now using digital a lot, okay? The next issue is global. 
Um, it used to be people would say, oh, we're only in Chicago. We don't compete with New York. We don't compete with Los Angeles. But because of digital, everything is global. Because you're competing in Chicago, you're competing with New York, Paris, and Shanghai. You're competing with everything ever worldwide. So we'll look at all forms of digital marketing. There's a list here on the right side, search engine, ads, and all that. But better is the, the image in the uh, center. You, your business, you yourself as a person looking for jobs, maintaining your, your business profile. You're in the center and you use everything as much as possible to get people to find you and contact you, okay? Professor, can I make a couple of uh, comments? Well, yeah, go ahead, comment, yes, go ahead. Uh, my first comment is, uh, you talked about uh, last three months. I believe that uh, the need for digital marketing had always been there, but last three months have created an awareness on a widespread basis. Absolutely. Yes, they should have done this 25 years ago. Companies yeah. should have done it from the very beginning. The ones that did have done really well. Um, Amazon is the best example. Amazon is amazing at digital marketing and everything digital. But most companies thought, okay, we'll do a bit, we'll do a lot, but not really all the way. Yet yeah, it's always been a, a necessary thing. Um, and my next comment is actually a question. So you talked about some of the tools and you gave example of a one person flower shop. And you mentioned that there are tools they can do it themselves. I understand that part. But my question is, does it put the professionals in a compromised situation? Because there are a lot of do-it-yourself tools available where people can do it themselves unless someone finds a job in large, large corporations. Oh, that's a really, oh. Okay, look folks, I'll be really honest. For the long time, Google and so on kept telling us, use Google advertising for everything from big company all the way down to little company, even little flower shops. And so a lot of flower shops and little one person, two person restaurant were using Google advertising. And we tried that for a long time. It doesn't work because little stores, they don't have the time, the money, the skills to do this. And a lot of agencies were telling them, pay us money, we'll do it for you. But it didn't really work. So what I'll show you later on, not today, but later on, is how to do it for free. And there are really great tools now. You don't need no money, no skills, Anyone can do it. How to set digital marketing for themselves for a little shop. You guys, what I'll show you guys is how to set up for your friends, friends and family. Uh, help help them to uh, be be online. My brother is a, a lawyer, so I help him with his digital marketing um, for free. I'll show you how to Many friends of mine, they have uh, small restaurants, one, one person, two person restaurants. And I do the digital, I help them with the digital marketing for free. It's really easy to do. So um, at the low end, it's easy to do. If you guys are doing it for professionally, focus on the mid-level. There's where mid-sized companies, they can, they can pay for this. They can afford it. They have the, they have the money for it. They need it more. Um, and they're roughly about $10 million a year or more in revenue. Below that, too small. There's not, not really enough money there to pay people for digital marketing. Okay. Thank you. I think uh, it's a longer discussion. Maybe we can have it at another time. Okay. Yeah. All the so, so, in the next few weeks, all this. So, so the class is focused on digital marketing. Yes. Um, but you should also link that with like uh, other part of the digital business, like a digital sales or digital whatever transition or digital operations. That's a good point. No, we have to limit things. We can't do everything. There is um, sales, for example, and the CRM, like Salesforce and HubSpot, all that, that ties really closely to digital marketing, but we simply don't have time to cover that. 
at, um, at our startup. I do the marketing and another team does the sales. We cooperate, but I do here, we're not going to cover that. I said, we don't have time to cover that. Okay. Uh, <coughs> as a question. Sure. Uh, I mean, Charles, so if you have like a digital marketing, uh, like a certain way people are interested, if you want a complete uh, transaction uh, for a really small business, like what you mentioned, like one person flower shop, uh, what you typically the tool can easily helping them to uh, tr finish the transaction. Uh, okay, for a mid-sized company and larger digital digital transaction, that's fine. Volutions, whatever, there's lots of that. But for the little guys, the little shops, both really honest here, I've done this for at least 20 or 30 little, little shops. They don't have time to set this up and manage it, okay? Yeah. So there, and again, here, little shops, the best, the best way to transaction, people come into the shop. People, their the best, the, most of the business is done by their best customers who come again and again and again. You, you can set up transaction software, but it's return customers coming to the store that is going to be most of their business, just to be really honest. Um, you could, if possible, in theory, to set up volution Okay. For a small business, but really difficult. Okay. Uh, 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 just a small little bit more question. Uh, for sure. this one. There's a company in Canada called uh, Shopify or something. Oh, yes. And they are so popular nowadays, uh, uh, like a wildfire everywhere. But what they do? Uh, uh, is that same related to this one? Shopify is really big. There's Volution, Shopify, at least 65 of these, 65 of these kinds of, of transaction companies. And they're growing really fast and are many more. They do the transaction, but they've also expanded into the marketing, the sales, all sorts of things around it. MailChimp, for example, used to be only about email marketing. But MailChimp now, they do the website for you. So MailChimp will help you build the website and they tie together with Shopify Evolution they tie in with transaction packages. So MailChimp is evolving into everything marketing. All of these companies are tying themselves together into all sorts of things. Google, not so much. Google in many ways is still Google AdWords and that's about it. There's no Google email marketing platform, for example, they're just not doing that. So it's other things, okay? Before you talk about Google, you said uh, which company making that one to make Shopify uh, build a website based on the Shopify or something? What's the company name you mentioned it? Uh, mail, let me type it here. Mail something, isn't it? Yeah, hang on. MailChimp. It's a silly name. Oh, MailChimp. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It's a really funny name. and. They used to be here in Oakland, all right? They, 15 years ago, they were headquartered in Oakland. And I, the, the CEO was a woman, she started, it was a really small company, really nice people. And I spoke with her quite a few times at conferences. Now they're a huge company. They're in Atlanta, thousands of people. MailChimp is number one. It's amazing all the stuff they do. Look at their FAQs, learn, learn what they do. It's much more than just email marketing, okay? Thank you. Yeah, I'm done. So let's see going forward. Okay, so why keywords? Really simple. If you're not at the top, nobody can find you. This is an eye tracking study. They get people that sit in front of computers, they ask them questions, and they look at what they see on the computer, where they look on the computer. The more red it is, the more they look. And you can see people look at the top of the page on the right side of the page. At the top is the first link, and then on the right, that big box, they call the Google information box, which is super important. You can see more people look at the information box than the links, actually. I'll show you later on in two or three classes how to fill out the information box, and that's totally free. It's free, and you can do a lot of stuff in there that's really cool. It's 
actually better to have a good information box than to have a good website. On the left side, here in the links, the first link gets 68.9% of the clicks. Okay, that's basically 70% go to the first one. If it's a brand name like Nike or Adidas or the Four Seasons Hotel, they get basically 70% of the traffic. The rest doesn't matter. If you're below position three or four, you basically don't exist. Nobody sees you. So you have to be at the top. That's why keywords matter. That's why being that number one matters, okay? It's really that simple. And the note on the left side of the bottom, is worse on mobile. On mobile devices, people pick up their phones, they simply look at the first thing and that's it. They don't scroll down, they don't, they don't look any further. They click on the first, excuse me, the first one and that's it. So the first click is the one that matters. Be findable by your customers wherever they look, not just in search engine, not just Google, but in Facebook, in picture search, in video, YouTube, whatever. So you will see keywords is used for everything across digital marketing. That's why we start with keywords. It's one of the basic things of digital marketing. Skip one, here. The website. So people go to, go to okay, people go to the website. Why, why do the keywords matter on the website? So you see here the website on the left side, women's downhill ski boots. If you click on the white space here, and then do a right click and select view source, you see here the page source. This is the HTML that creates that page. Here at line seven, I'm sorry, line six, you see title, women's downhill ski boots, REI. Okay, then line seven, you see the description, meta name description, shop for women's boots. These two, the title and the description, you write that, you control that, you put the keywords in there. Okay, you write that material. Those two lines that you write here show up down here in Google. So when someone comes to Google and they search for women's ski boots, the first line that shows up here, women's downhill ski boots, that's here in line six on your page. You wrote that, that's what shows up in Google. The same thing with this description. You wrote the description, that shows up in Google. So when Jennifer comes to Google, she's searching for women's ski boots, the one that looks best to her, that's the one she clicks on. So if you write a really good title and description using the top keywords, she most likely wants to click on your link and then come to your page. That's why they matter so much, okay? This is why keywords matter in terms of SEO, title tag, description tag, and so on, okay? Questions? Really quick. To see the meta tags in Windows, do a right click here, you see this menu, select page source. In Apple, you do command option U, or you click on a blank space, right click, and you click show page source. Okay, a little bit different in uh, Apple and Windows. But then what you get is the HTML code. Here you see a close up, title is here. And then line five, description, content equal, looking to buy skis, and so on. You write all this, that which shows up in Google search engine. Okay. Before you start keyword research, okay, spreadsheet. This is also, we'll send this spreadsheet to you. It'll be available in the uh, shared drive. Use it, it's really important. I work on this quite a bit. I keep updating it, improving it. And it's, you see below there are many more tabs. There's a lot more than what you see here. But it does, it counts characters for you. So when you write the, the title tag, for example, you write the tag and it tells you how many characters are in it. Your description, maximum 160 characters. So this one here has 137, you're good, no problem. This one, 80, that's fine. But this one in line six, 161, that's red, it's over the limit. What happens, Google will cut that off. The words are too many, we get simply cut off. So 
when it shows up in red, you know it's too long, right? You can also see if you sort by, click on the down arrow, you sort by size and see if a duplicate, or you can fix that. Google does not like it as a duplicate. The same thing for mobile, 130 character. You see Bitcoin is good for desktop, 137, but too long for mobile. So it warns you, and that way you can go in and fix that, okay? So this is on the shared drive, download it and use it. So I have a question here. Sure. Uh, it looks like uh, they don't have a limit for the characters. So how do they decide what is a long description versus acceptable size of the description? Ah, Google does have a limit. Google, for which one, for, 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 for title or description? So looking at uh, what we see on the screen, uh -huh. right under 161, 155 is uh, acceptable, but on the left and right, there are 134 and 137, which are red. Cool, correct. For desktop, you see here, 160 character for desktop, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But here for mobile, 130 oh. for mobile, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a really big problem. A lot of people, and we'll talk about this next session, but Google for many, for a long time said 300 characters. So you see, you still see a lot. And Google, a lot of people are not aware that 130 for mobile. So if you, this one here will get cut off at 130. Got it. And the, so you put your most important keyword at the very beginning, because you know, in desktop, it'll be a, a little bit longer, but it'll be shorter in, in uh, mobile. Okay. Thank you. Sure. No problem. Well, this is yeah. very confusing. Go ahead. Uh, so for the Google search, essentially the engine is targeted with the text search, and with a certain field, a certain fixed length or less, isn't it? Yeah. And just really complex what the searching you look for. Um, We'll talk about that in two or three classes about how the search engine chooses what to target. Okay, very complex issue. But what we're focusing on here is this here. We want Jennifer, when she's looking for ski boots, we want her to click on our link. So that's what our real target is not Google. Our target is the person doing the search. Okay, really important. Okay. So the spreadsheet, here example, of keywords, lots of keywords, you'll end up with thousands and thousands of keywords. Here's Johns Hopkins University. 1.4 million searches, right? That sounds really good. Except Johns Hopkins misspelled. It's really called Johns with an S. This is an old form of John. 300 years ago, it was John with an S. So it's the real name, what they really search for, not what people actually search for. You have to be really careful with keywords, okay? Here's how to calculate keywords, the value of keywords, but we'll see this a little bit more, okay? So if we can go back to John Hopkins' example, even though correct name is John's, would a marketing person use uh, John's with S or would go with the, the popular way of uh, searching without S? Ah, uh, good, good question. So you would know that people search for singular. So you use the singular as a keyword, but in the ad, you add John's plural with the S because people, most people don't notice it or they'll think that's the correct spelling, okay? So use the correct spelling in your ad, but use the singular as a keyword, but you also use another keyword with plural. Use both at the same time, okay? You always use misspellings because Google, you very often Google knows there's a misspelling and will correct it, but you cannot trust Google. Google makes mistakes, and so you need to fix it yourself. Always, so use, the, always use misspelling. So that was my follow-up question, which you partially answered. So <laughs> for example, if I say John Hopkins without S behind John, a lot of times 
Google says, uh, did you mean John Hopkins? Mm -hmm. So is that message from Google through their own analytics or actually the marketing person puts it in? No, Google did that. Google noticed there are millions and millions of searches for Johns Hopkins, so Google fixed that. But you open your own, a new startup with a word that Google did not know, Google will not know if it's spelled correctly or a misspelling for it. So you have to make sure you have to do an ad where you use the misspelling as a keyword and then the correct spelling in your ad. Okay. Okay. Got it. So Thank you. Don't trust Google. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's go straight through because we're only got about um, 45 minutes now. But it's really good you guys are asking questions. We're going to go through these really quickly because there's a lot of discussion towards the end. And I'm totally happy to stay on longer. So if you have to leave at 2.30, I'm sorry, 3.30, that's fine. If you want to stay longer, that's also fine. So software to find the top keywords, okay? We'll look at nine different ways to find keywords, okay? So the first one, Google AdWords itself. It used to be called Google AdWords. They changed the name last year to Google Ads. But I've been using it so long, I still keep saying Google AdWords. So Google Ads has one of the best tools available. It's called our Keyword Planner. It's in Google Ads. So you sign up for Google Ads account. It's free. Do not, you don't have to put in a credit card. And then you can use the tool for free, OK? Go to Google Ads. You click on the little gear icon, and then you click on Keyword Planner. And this shows up. You can put up the 10 keywords. Here, I put ski boots. I'll use ski boots as an example in many slides. So I put in ski boots, downhill ski boots, and so on. But you can also put in the domain name. So here's the cool thing. We put in our company name, skiboots.com. So Google will show us keywords that are people are using to come to our website. But Google also show keywords for our competitors. So we put our competitor's name in there. And then we can see the keywords going to their website. Okay, really important. So look at your competitor in Planner and you'll see their keywords also. You can opt like Google for doing this. Competitor will call Google and say, don't do this. Google still does it, okay? You set the location, language, English, location US, if that matters. Otherwise, leave it alone, okay? And then you click on get results and you get this. You get a graph showing the trend for the keywords over time here, the last from 2015 to now, up in the winter, down in the summer for ski boots. Below you see ski boots here, and then number for them. 165, 165,000 for ski, 6,000 for ski poles. We'll talk a little, a little bit later about these numbers. But what you see here, I took this uh, black and white here, but you get basically about 1,000 keywords for skis, for ski boots, okay? All to do ideas. Here you see blue is desktop, red is mobile. You can see that mobile over time is bigger and bigger and bigger. At Stanford now, mobile search, 82.5%. In China, Mobile is 98.5%. And Google expects mobile to be the dominant form in the US and Europe next year. Okay. Here in Google Ads, you can see more keywords. You set the calendar to all time, and you go to, you click on keywords, and then down here you have search terms. If you have the ad account, your account been up and running for some time. It'll show you keywords that trigger your ads. So you see here, people are using ventilator, what does, how does a ventilator work, and so on, with more suggestions. It's got impressions, it's got clicks. So many more keywords, okay? You can choose a keyword, you like it, you select it, you add it. You also see a keyword that doesn't, that's wrong. For example, kidney stones and pregnancy has nothing to do with this. So what we're looking for, we select kidney stones and pregnancy and mark it as a, as a negative keyword. We don't use that word. But the 
the key thing here is looking for good keywords. Number three, in analytics, as soon as you can set up analytics because you start collecting data and set up analytics today and you're ready to do marketing maybe in three months, but then you have at least three months of data. If you wait till the last minute, you don't get data. So set up analytics as soon as possible and then you get a lot more data. So here we tie analytics to ads. You click on in analytics, you go to Google ads, you go down, click on search queries, it shows you more words, okay? Here you set the calendar to all time. Step two, you see all words. And what we see down here, 31,800 more keywords. That's basically 32,000 more keywords for your collection. And of course, you export all of that. Put it in your spreadsheet, okay? You export so the, the sure. data you talk about is your own website data or advertisement data? What uh, data? In this case, on this screen, your, your data, okay? If you go back here to here, enter domain, it will show other people's data, okay? So you go here, and you put my company, and you hit enter, you'll see data for my company. You can say, aha, I'll take those keywords, okay? So you get good keywords from my company. And if my company is doing really good in Google and has lots of history, you'll see really good keywords. So you can copy those and use them, okay? So, so uh, if, uh, if we like uh, use a uh, startup, haven't been very long, so we don't have much data. Exactly, that's the downside. If you're a new startup, if you're a new startup in a market where people already are, then you will find keywords, okay? Their keywords. But if you're a new startup in a new market that never existed before, really big problem. There's no keywords. When Uber started, there is no such, the ideal, use your cell phone to call a car, did not exist. So people, you call a taxi. There was no keyword for Uber. So if you're a brand new, brand new startup, a new, a new concept, really difficult. For our startup, it's a big problem. So we're doing something you haven't done before. Okay? Thank you. Sure. Down here, be careful. Look for irrelevant keywords, like kidney stones, is not relevant to this one, or bad keywords. And I'll show you later on what, what example of bad keywords. Analytics, yeah, we covered this one, 32,000 more keywords. In four, Search Console. Analytics, you search console, another tool from Google, it's free, you tie it to analytics, you go to analytics, acquisition, console, queries, more keywords. And here, 10,500 more keywords. So you see, we're already up around 35,000, 40,000 keywords really quickly, okay? Search Console itself has also more data, more keywords. Let's search Console, you click on Search Traffic, Search Analytics, you check mark all of this, check click, impression, click through rate, and so on. The last 28 days or 90 days, for example, you get lots more data. Hokusai, the Japanese painter, 30,000 impressions, 290 clicks, 0.95% click through rate, position five. So you download all of this. 999 more keywords. Autocomplete at Google. You go to Google, we're selling ski boots. So we type, what is the best ski boo? Don't finish the word, okay? Type really slow, you'll see suggestions from Google. If you see one that's good, do a screenshot and save that, okay? Then you tell your intern, here, type all of these in. <laughs> Okay, or you have to do this, but Google is showing you suggestions what other people think of good ideas. So you may not think about Kibu brand, wide feet, big calves, and so on. So Google will give you more suggestions, more ideas. Okay, collect those. People also ask, 
when you search at Google, uh, from, please, sorry, you come to the page itself. In the bottom, you scroll down. At the bottom of the page, people also ask if more questions that people ask about ski boots, okay? What flex should I get and so on? What the best women's ski boots? Do a screenshot and add that to the collection. Microsoft Advertising also has Keyword Tool. It's really good, it works really well. I use it for projects as well. You don't have to pay for it. You sign up for Microsoft Advertising and find the Keyword Planner and then put in your keywords and it shows you more keywords. Here are, you see um, 150, 70, 325, there's maybe 10,000 keywords more, a few thousand more keywords from Microsoft Advertising for outdoor hiking. You mean uh, you have 10 word uh, advertising in the, like a Microsoft website, you don't have to pay? You don't have to pay at Microsoft. You don't have, um, you don't have to pay for advertising in Microsoft. You don't have to set up a campaign, just use the tool, okay? Okay. For consumer product, by the way, Microsoft advertising works really well um, because it has 22% market share in the US. So we, for consumer products, we use Microsoft advertising. And then the last tool, keyword.io. It shows you keyword by YouTube, Amazon, and so on. You put in ski boots and it shows you 600 key more, more keywords. And then you can click on um, export and copy all those to your spreadsheet. And the final tool, answerthepublic.com. Here you go to answerthepublic.com. It works better in Microsoft, in Edge, and you put in a keyword. And it shows you all the questions around, it, it generates, it creates questions for that keyword. So you can export this. You click on export, you download that, and you have more ways of asking questions. Branded keywords are your company products, products and services, okay? So for example, Outback Steakhouse, they have the Blooming Onion, that's something very famous, our famous Blooming Onion, and so on. So you would use those, all your, your, your products, names of products, names of services, names of company, are all branded keywords. Put that in the collection. You make permutations of keywords. You put your keyword over here in this list, ski boot, ski mitten, and you add good, best, top, and so on. And it makes variations. So this list can be a thousand words with three versions over here that make 3,000 more words. So you end up with a lot of keywords huge numbers of keywords. You can even put three variations, okay? Really easy to make lots of, lots of keywords. This is a free tool. Go to bookmark this in your browser and use it. It's free, it's great, it's a great tool. So, writing keywords, been doing it for 4,000 years now. <laughs> the free tools are really good ones. Google Ads, Microsoft Ads, and then Google Analytics and Console. Those are all free, okay? The other ones are Microsoft Excel Spreadsheet, but there's also Google Ads, I'm sorry, um, Google Spreadsheet, that's free, you can use that. Okay? And then there are paid tools, Majestic, Ahref, SEMrush, there are all sorts of paid tools out there. Some of these, you can use it for free, I mean, you pay for the professional version or you have to start paying for it, okay? But the key here, the note here, the key thing is the, the tools don't do it for you. You collect the keywords, you have to evaluate them, okay? Don't trust their data. And I'll show you why. This is what I asked before at the very beginning. Can we trust the data? So how many keywords? All of them. You find 30,000 keywords, you use all 30,000 because you don't know which ones are going to work. In our backyard, we have a bird feeder and in bird feeder, we put bird seed. We don't know which, which seed is going to bring which bird. So we have to try all the seeds, all kinds of seeds, big seeds, little, little seeds and everything. 
You don't know which keyword going to work, so you try all of them, okay? All right, folks, really important slide. I made this a few days ago. This is new information. Nowhere else on the web. I've had a lot of discussion with key people around the web, uh, top people in SEO and AdWords and analytics. We've been talking about this slide here. I made this a few days ago. These are keywords for a project with Harvard. I'm doing a project right now for ventilators. These are the top keywords. I went to Google, uh, Google AdWords to find the data for those keywords. So Google AdWords tell me 8,100 for that keyword, 1.5 million for this keyword, and so on. Very good. Low competition, cost per click, six cents, 56 cents, $1.22. This is Google Ads calculation, okay? Then I tried the very same word in SEM Rush, maybe the best known SEO tool out there. Again, the same thing, projection for BPAP, 1,900. You see the difference? Google says 8,000, SEM Russia, 1,900. Big difference. 1.5 million, 200,000. Big difference. And competition and the bids, $1.81, 28 cents. This is reality. This is what I'm getting at Harvard for these keywords for two months for a project, I'm spending $10,000 per month on these keywords. This is what really happens, okay? For BPAP machine, 2,000 actual impressions. Not 8,000, not 1,900. I get more than SEM predicts. I get nowhere what Google predicts. The difference with Google, a quarter of what Google predicts, 100% more than SEM rush. Here, 56 times more than what Google predicts. SEM Rush had no prediction, 193% more, 13 times more. See, these predictions from Google and SEM Rush, they're not just simply wrong, they're, they're irrelevant data. Basically, delete all that data, it doesn't matter. It simply does not help you, okay? It actually misleading. You look at this, you think, oh, this word, 1.5 million, cool, we're going to use that. Really big word. In reality, we only get 400 impressions a month for a $10,000 campaign in a field where very few people are actually advertising. So, Question. Okay, uh, yes, go ahead. Are we going to talk about uh, bidding process in another class or? Yes. You, okay. Yes, yeah. we'll talk about how to use the keywords in the class on title, tags, and description tags, and in the uh, browsers, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. So here's explanation of what all this means, okay? Look at this table very carefully. It's uh, your presentation. We got to get it and go through it. Think about this, what it means. I've been discussing this with the key people in the industry, um, including SEM Rush. I mean, they've been, we've been emailing back and forth talking about this. So here's steps for doing keyword research, how to find keywords. I'll let you guys through, go through this because we have more slides. I want to go through the slides as much as I can, but the basic steps, think about your page. What's the main, what's the main concept on that page? Look at the page, not the website. So for this page about ski boots, what's the main concept? Of course, the ski boots. So then we look for that keyword in the tools. We find all sorts of words for ski boots. And ski mittens, that's a different word, a different page. So then we do search for that concept, okay? Again, also competitor. Look for our competitor, find the keyword for ski boots. Five to 10 competitors. You end up with maybe 10 to 20,000 keywords. You put them in categories, you test them. And I'll show you in the next slide how to test them. And then you end up with real data, how many, what, how many actual impressions and clicks they really get. You look for the ones that are relevant, those are the ones you focus on. You pick the top two or three keywords, those are the words for your page, okay? Put keywords in categories. The major categories, of course, branded your company. So you make one campaign just for the company, skiboots.com, skiboots incorporated. People in your company, 
and I'm doing it right now for our startup. I have campaigned for the CEO, CFO, CMO, and so on, myself, and so on. Services, ski boot repair, fixing all such keywords around services. Products, the products themselves in informational and transactional. Information, they're looking for best ski boots, top ski boots, and so on. They're looking for information about ski boots. Transactional, they, look, they want to buy the boots, compare, quote, try, sample, test, and so on. Now they look to buy the ski boot. And then also more branded. The Rossignol ski boot by this woman here, Frida Hansdorfer, who you see over here, she won the Winter Olympics. So she has the official ski boot. So you put that, you put official, original, and so on. So these are your categories. Put the keywords in those categories and then you test them with small budgets. And here's what you see. This is again, um, real data for a project we did a few months ago for accelerators. These are the keywords we wanted to try. And here we see the average cost per click, 26 cents, 25 cents, and so on. 2,900 impressions, 54 clicks, and so on, with click-through rates, and so on, okay? Impression share. You see really quickly, impressions, 2,900, 700, 800, 700, it dropped really fast. A few keywords get most of the traffic. The rest don't really matter. Do small budgets, five or $10 a day, 10 cents a click, okay? Even $3 a day is good enough. $5 a day is good enough. You'll see which actually get impressions and clicks. And then those keywords, you put them in new campaigns and you focus on those. Every account is different based on quality score and many other things. So your campaign is going to be different from my campaign, different data, okay? Translating keywords, really easy now. It used to be very expensive or if you don't know how, it can be very expensive. Google Spreadsheet works together with Google Translate. So you can translate your keywords. Doesn't work in Excel, okay? In Google, Trans in Google Spreadsheet, you use this formula. Equal Google Translate, A4, the cell, and then English, Spanish. So here you say the, the source is English and the goal is Spanish. So when you run this, this formula, the English word, it converted to Spanish. So you see here, keywords over here are turned into Spanish over here. You grab the little blue box here, the, here, you drag it down, all the keywords are translated automatically. The same thing for German and French, Italian and Chinese. And for 66 languages, okay? So you translate 10,000 words in 66 languages for free, really easy. If you do it, if you pay a company, they'll charge one dollar per word, per language, would be a lot of money, okay? Be careful, Google makes mistakes. So if you can, look at it. You see here for Chinese, the word duck in English is anatra in Chinese, which is Italian. For some reason, I looked at the code, is correct, but for some reason, Google makes a mistake and puts the wrong word there. So if you can, review the translation. Okay. The last tool we look at is Google Trends for keywords. This gives you a rough idea of what's going on in the market. It's a, it's a way of getting an idea of things, but don't use it as, as official data. Here we go to Google Trends, the URL. You set the calendar, calendar all time, 14 years, and you look at the trend. Is the trend up or down? Here we look at, for example, fish. Fish it goes down a little bit over 14 years, but the word cat is pretty steady, but the word bird goes up. It goes up really high around 2009 and down, down again. And in 2009, there were stars, of a disease transmitted by birds. So birds became really important and then they disappeared. So you get a really good idea for your product or service or your market if your market is going up or if it's going down and what the trend is in your market, okay? You also do the same thing. Is this a chart that is easily free access? 
One more time, please. I mean, this is a chart. Uh, this uh, graph, uh, something similar like this is uh, free access for anybody. Now, so you only get a graph and it, be, be careful with this. It shows you general data, but not very specific. But uh, is that be uh, open to everybody? For example, if I'm uh, logging or something, I want to find uh, uh, which things are popular now compared to a year ago or last five years, trending up or down. That's is that right. a way I can just look at it? For example, I look at Apple oh, uh, compared with the info. No, it's open to everybody. It's, it's free, no pay, open to anybody, no login. Just okay. That's it. Link here, you can use it. It's really cool. It's, Look for stuff. You'll be really surprised. I had no idea the birds went up like this. And that dogs, this answers the question, dogs are more popular than cats, okay? That's a lot of questions. It's a lot of fun to look at this, okay? So examples. Here's for ventilators at, Har at Harvard. We're running a campaign at Harvard Medical right now for medical ventilators. Really big issue, really important. Harvard has a very good digital ventilator to train people how to use them. So I managed that campaign. So I want to know the top keywords, how to use a medical ventilator. So I tested 3,000 keywords, okay? Of that 3,000, 119 got clicks. The other 2,000 so, 2,900 keywords, no clicks at all. So they all matter. 119 matter, but you see them over here. Basically, a few get most of the clicks. It drops really fast. After a few hundred, they don't matter. Especially here, you see 200 clicks, 300 clicks, that's 500 here, and the rest basically doesn't matter. So here are the most important ones. Click-through rate, 13.5%, super good keyword, All right? So we use, we find these keywords, we use them in, the web page, in the ads, in the newsletters. 143,000 impressions, 11,000 clicks, 7.8% click through rate. That is super good, okay? And this is a really quick hey, test. What's the difference between clicks and the click through rate? Oh, what's the difference here? Ah, you divide clicks by impressions, you get a click through rate. 203 divided by 2.8. 2,700 equals 7%. This shows you how effective the keyword is versus impressions. You may get many impressions, but few clicks. You see, let's see, this one here, 9%. This one's really, this keyword is good. The next one is 4%. So this one is almost twice as good as the next one, okay? You'll see sometimes this one down here, 17%, super good keyword. Not many clicks, but super good. 21%, super good, okay? All right? Thank you. Okay. And the last example here, it's not just about Google, and not just about the US. Um, this is our startup, the one I'm working at. I'm the CMO of the startup, so my job to get this done, and the startup is we have people in France, in Australia, in China, and here in Silicon Valley. So we're a worldwide company. So we want to show up worldwide. So this is um, results in mobile, because for us mobile is really important. This is Google. You type in the current startup name, we're, we have an ad at the top, and we're number one in mobile at Google. Go to the um, Bing, the Microsoft search engine, we're number one at Bing. No advertising, our link is number one, and we are the first four links, it's about us, okay? Then we go to Baidu, we're number one at Baidu. Here's Jer Jerry, our CEO, is number one, and then the website itself, and people talking about our company. Same thing for Yandex, the Russia search engine. In Russia, countries of the former Soviet Union, they use Yandex, you type in our company name, we're number one. In company, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. So it's really easy, and I'll show you guys how to do this for your startup to be number one in 
Google, Bing, Baidu, Yandex, Worldwide. The point here for us, investors and partners can find us really easily. We're looking at, at this point, we're not looking for customers, we're looking for investors and partners. So if someone in India, Russia, China, Germany wants to invest with us, they go to their search engine, they look for us. We have to show up number one. So they look for us, they find us, and they can read about us. So what they, who is looking for us? Investors, where they are, and then we show up, we make sure that we show up number one for them in their country in whatever they look at, okay? This is easy to do, you don't pay for this. Further reading, more material. There are newsletters, particular marketing. There's searching you watch, searching you land, and searching you journal. These are free beta tools, okay? Um, they started a long time ago, 20 years ago, and for the first, they were all about just SEO. But later on, they talk about advertising Google, then later on, by 2005, 2006, they talk about social media, and then content marketing, and so on. So then, now they talk about everything digital marketing, all possible variations. Um, there's three of them. They're free. You don't pay for this. They come to you every day. Put them in a folder in your email box. Once a week, go through and scan them. Look through them and see what they're talking about. And they'll let you know if you see something really important, you'll see that. Most of the stuff you talk about is not important, but you'll see the main ones. You have to choose one, the very best one, is searching you watch. You click on that one, and that has more information, better information than the other two. But that's the number one. But honestly, I use all three. So I read once a week, I, I read all three of them and see what they're up to. That way you find out about new changes at Google, new tools, new ideas, and things like that. So summary about keywords. You guys saw keywords is not just for search engines, it's not just for SEO. Keywords are for SEO, for the meta tags, title tag description, but also for the, the heading on the page, the body text, image alt text, and so on. In the next few classes, I'll show you a lot more details around using the keywords on the page, also the technical details about embedded data in images and so on. Keywords also work in the advertising, Google Ads, Microsoft Ads, also ads in social media for Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. You use your keywords in those ads. Okay. This is what people are searching for. This is what the people look at. When they see the ad with their keyword, then they click on your page, okay? Then social media. In your postings, when you're posting to Google, I'm sorry, when you post to Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, if you use the top keywords, people will see your posting. If you don't use keywords, they don't see your posting. Especially in social media with lots of posting, people go through very quickly. They read it. If it's interesting, they'll read it. If it's not interesting, swipe right, they go to the next item. So you have to, you have to catch their eye. Email newsletters. I'll show you guys how to send newsletters and you use your top keywords in your newsletter, in MailChimp and so on, in the heading, the subject line, and the body of the, of the newsletter. Uh, if people see what they're interested in, they'll read it. If they don't see it, they'll skip it and go to the next one. Content marketing, use keywords in the titles of PDFs, articles, things you send out, but also in videos, photos, and books. We'll show you later on for video, you use keywords for your videos in YouTube. Also, video uh, keywords in the title of your video, the description of your video, also in the video itself. When you talk about things, use keywords as you talk about something that keeps people's attention, okay? Yeah, so, I yeah. also believe that keywords are an important factor in PR, although PR, is out of the scope of this class. Oh yes. Just, just to highlight the importance of keywords. 
let me add that to the list. PR, yes. Um, so, so the keyword is associate with a website or associate with one piece of advertisement or associate what whatever piece of work you, you put it on like YouTube or article that, that it's in the so keyword is in all of this or is well, when you say keyword is you mean keyword in 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 the website or keyword in advertisement or keyword in everything in everything use a keyword basically in everything because when you try to get their attention partition is really right i pr should be on this list okay because people go to a trade show uh people see um press releases they see articles in newspaper if the thing you're interested in shows up in that press release in an article then they'll read the article they'll pay attention to it so your top keyword should be showing up in your press releases in the articles about you. If it's not showing up, people are not going to read the article. But then you use the top keywords across everything in the search engine. So you, can, you get their attention, they'll click on your link. But also the ads in the search engine, people see that at the very top of the page. Let me go back here, I'll show you something at the very beginning. You see here, the first three is what gets clicks. But if you look really carefully, this little dark blue here, this little dark blue, blue, those are ads. The first three links on the page are actually ads, not organic links. That's really bad news. So if people rely on SEO, they're going to be down here. The, the ads are at the top. So the keywords that show up at the very top are the, for the ads, they're the ones that show up first. And people looking for that hotel, the Capitol Hill Hotel, they see that very first, the Capitol Hill Hotel in the heading. So that's what, that's what shows up. And so the ad gets their attention. Social media, in Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, in the posting, that gets their attention. But also the pictures, use pictures that have to do with the keyword, like ski boots that get their attention. They look at it and they'll read more about you. So use your keyword in social media. Next is newsletters. Newsletters show up in their email and they read those. If they're looking for ski boots, they'll notice the newsletter with ski boots to get their attention. And so how, how to, let's say, how to put the keyword, like say, LinkedIn. Does LinkedIn have Keyword too. In the LinkedIn, you have a posting. Ah, so you have your profile. Mm -hmm. So for your profile in LinkedIn, you put your name, and they say tenure expert in this topic as a keyword. Okay, and then I work in keywords. I, I work in this word. I work with ski boots. I design ski boots. I build ski boots. Okay, and then below that the description. That's a, what you description about yourself. That's your profile. But then also in the postings, you write articles, postings at LinkedIn, just like um, Facebook and Twitter. And in those, you use keywords in the very beginning. And thirdly, the advertising in LinkedIn. You put an ad with the keyword in the ad. And then in the advertising, you can say, people who use this keyword, people who Look at things that include this keyword. You catch them all three ways. In the profile, in the posting, and the ad, a LinkedIn. Let me see. Okay. We'll cover that when we look at social media. Okay. You said I like hear like on the left here, in pictures, pictures of ski boots, put the name, put the word ski boot in the picture, embedded in the picture. Um, as part of the picture, but also in the technical information for the picture. The books, you write books, the title of the book uses your top keyword. That's what people look for when they search for your books at Amazon. You go to Amazon and search for your products, and you show up. There's SEO for Amazon now. For your product at Amazon, make sure your, your product has 
the best keywords in the description and the title of the product, but also advertise it in Amazon. Use keywords there. So basically, use keywords in everything digital marketing all across. Plus, as Fang says, in PR. I'll add that to the presentation. You see? So the summary at the bottom here is you let your keywords know that you have what they want. You're not writing for search engines. You're not writing for the machines. You're writing for people. They can, they can see that you have what they want, okay? More questions? Uh, in case they, we have the keyword that people wanted, and uh, how do we translate that keyword to certain financial transaction like purchasing or something? Uh, typically, how that been done? Uh, if it is a link to your website or something? Mm -hmm. It depends which one. Okay, in AdWords, let me back up, let me think about this. In AdWords, you have the, key, the keyword, ski boots. It shows you, you got this many impressions, this many clicks, this many transactions. AdWords will show you how many people, my phone ringing over here. AdWords will show you how many, somebody's, somebody's phone is going off. I will, will show you these keywords got this many sales, okay? It's part of AdWords. But you can also add a tracking code to the keyword. So you use the keyword in an ad, and I'll show you later on how to add what's called UTM tracking. I'll type it here. These are called um, Okay. Also called pixels. People at Facebook call them pixels. It's a bit of code that you write. You put that in your ad. So when you know that you put the ad in Facebook, so you know that when somebody came to Facebook, they saw the ad, they clicked on it, and then in analytics, you saw which ad produced which sale. And you know which keyword you're using, you can track that. The same thing in content marketing. Um, everywhere. You can use tracking tags to see which, which newsletter, which ad, which page got tracking. You put a, you talk to me on my page, andreas.com, I put a page about you. On there, I put a link for your website, and you give me a, a tag for that link. So someone comes to my site, clicks on that link, go to your site and buy something, in your analytics, you can see that my site sent the visitor to your site and bought something at your site. You can track that all the way down. I'll show you guys how to do that. It's, it's a, it sounds technical, but it's actually really easy to do. The first time you do it, it takes you like half an hour, one hour, but the second time, you do it really fast. You can team how to do it. It's really, really easy. It works really well. Thank you, really good. <laughs> More questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, sure. I know our goal is try to be first on the list of everything. Okay, so I guess you will show us through the course. But what happened if you and me are compete on the same product? Let's say we are ski boots in the example. We are selling the same ski boots, and just happen they figure out that I'm on top of the list. Or I, my hour ago, I reach it first, and they. <laughs> I guess ultimate, I guess, I mean, is then they, other people try to compete to be the first also? And what do I do next? <laughs> what do I do now? Okay. There's two issues about that. The first one, yes, they're all competing. Right. But the re reality, the reality is most of your competitors are not competing, <laughs> okay? This is pretty amazing. For you and me doing ski boots, we're a little company, we're making 10 million, 50 million a year. Okay, whatever. For big companies, for Harvard, for example, Harvard has $35 billion, okay? And I look at their competitors, Princeton, all major universities, they're not competing. Out of 10 major competitors, 
I can see that 80% are not doing anything. They have wow. lost the SEO. It's wow. pretty amazing. I meet with, um, I met last year with a $400 billion company. They've been around for 50 years. No SEO at all. No That's keywords amazing. at all. Okay? It's amazing. Most of your competitors do not compete. So you do the best you can. And folks, you don't have to be number one world superstar. Just as you show up in the top two or three, you get most of the business. You get, you get basically about 60% of the, of the business in your field. Um, of course, it's, number, it's great to be number one, but do really good and you'll be at the top. Don't worry about the other. If you're at a company, you're at a, a $500 million company, and they don't, they don't listen to you, look at your competitors. <laughs> Find when they're not doing anything. Talk to them. Go over there. They'll hire you. You come in, you take over everything. You do my better job. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's the reality. I was very surprised by that. I was at a uh, conference in New York, and there were 40 major corporations. Um, the top 100 corporations were there. And I'm talking about keywords and SEO, blah, blah, blah. And one of the CMOs held up her hand and said, so where do we put these keywords? Oh, you put them in your title tag. What's a title tag? Oh, that's part of the HTML. Just talk, talk to your webmaster. They'll do it. And she said, we don't have a webmaster. <laughs> and I said, how many of you guys have webmasters? Nobody had webmasters. It's incredible. None of them had webmasters. Um, and these were CMOs? Yep, CMOs at the 40 largest universities in the US. Wow. Harvard, Yale, Princeton, MIT, Brown University, Stanford, Berkeley, blah, blah, blah. None of them had a webmaster. Pretty incredible. Hmm. I'm surprised. <laughs> Even well, today, even today, you, it's, it's unbelievable how bad companies are at digital marketing, how important it is, how bad they are at it. Okay. <laughs> so you guys, you do, you get a B plus in this class, you'll be superstars out there. And you get an A, A plus, oh my God, you will do really well for your projects like I, I showed you. Oh, what's it here? Hang on. Number one worldwide for our company. Okay, it's really, really all of you by by the end of the class, all of you can do this for for your projects, your companies. Really easy. More questions? Hmm. <laughs> Look, digital marketing sounds, in one way, it sounds really complicated. And in many ways, there are, there are many things that are very complicated. But when you do it for a while, I think I was doing it from before, before they even had a name for it, okay? We do it for a very long time, you begin to realize it's not that complicated. There's some really, there's, the basic things are really easy, they're really straightforward. That's why I show you in this class. I have a question. So let's say if we followed, you know, everything you just said, you, all your suggestions made a change, how long does it take for Google or Bing to reflect the change in rankings? Ah, that depends. <laughs> that depends. <laughs> That's a horrible answer, no? Okay, if you're lucky, you make, a, you make a web page right now. Literally right now, you make a page, you upload it, bingo, you're done, okay? You pick up your watch, you look at your watch, count five, four, three, two, one. You put your, you, you go to Twitter, you tweet about your page. Three seconds later, you show up in Google. Google indexes Twitter. So you, you tweet the Twitter, three seconds later, Google picks up your page and will show it for searches in Twitter, okay? If you're did you say did you say you um you tweet your website URL or did you say you tweet okay you tweet it you, for a long time Google hated Twitter 
the rule of not in that Twitter. Okay, for about four years, five years, Google ignored Twitter. But finally, they said, "All right, all right, we give up," and they index it. So now they index it every every few seconds. So you tweet it, and three seconds later, you show up in Google. Okay. However, if it's a topic that's an issue, it can take a few a few minutes, a few hours, a few days, a few weeks. If it's something that's, that's sensitive, medical, banking, for example, Corona, then it can take uh, take time. If it has to do with um, with money, credit card issues, banks, it can take a week or two weeks. Now, Google will look at your page. They will. They have people who look at the page and try to figure out who you are and what you're doing. Got it. If it's about so, Corona. Got it. So in your, in in a tweet, do I need to do? Do I need to write anything else rather than just the URL? Not much. You simply say, "Hey, we have a new page about ski boots at skiboots.com/newskiboots.html." I would put cool. in a few keywords and you are not much. Cool. Amazing. Thanks. Um, for Corona, they really, Google really watches now. Um, for Harvard and Stanford, I work at medical schools at both Harvard and Stanford. Both of them, we have a lot of trouble with Google because we're doing things around Corona and COV-19. And it can take weeks and weeks and weeks for Google to approve a page from Harvard <laughs> or Stanford, okay? So it sounds incredible. So, but most things right away. Professor, I have a question. Sure. Uh, how do we, um, how do we market, um, like uh, an app, an app which is uh, like for customer service, um, to market it to like customers or workers. Ah, uh, who <laughs> Boy, you asked a big question. Oh, sorry. We're having this problem right now with our app. We just released our app a week ago. So right now we're doing, we're starting the marketing for the app and it's not for the general public, it's very specific for companies. So in, um, in LinkedIn, we could campaign or target the job title, directors, as specific mm -hmm. types of companies. And right now we start in California, so we start just California, only companies that do work in our field, a few mm -hmm. hundred, and then people with that job title, manager, director, C-level, and so on, okay? And also revenue. We want companies with $10 million or more. Below that, they're too small. They're not going to buy. And we pick out a certain size. So in, in LinkedIn, we're very, very specific who we're looking for. Um, email marketing, MailChimp, the same thing. We were buying lists. We bought about 5,000 names of people with name, LinkedIn profile, size mm -hmm. of company, revenue, and so on. And then we target to those people using newsletters. Okay. Oh. And um, Google, we're doing general ads, also using keywords to make so people come to that and say, oh, this is the professionals only for companies, for professionals, so we don't get um, um, end users, people at home. So it, it tells them this is for companies only. So most of our effort is in LinkedIn um, and email marketing. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you later uh, where you can get, uh, where you can buy a list, and what we're cool. using. Okay. Thank you, Professor. But uh, do we use like specific keywords for those or like, uh, um, like a specific uh, phrases, so like we, catching keywords, catching phrases, so that so that the specific uh, uh, searchers will just go to them, will, will just arrive to their uh, boxes sure. or. We do two campaigns in LinkedIn, not just two. We probably do maybe five campaigns in LinkedIn. One is for keyword. Okay, let's say you're selling a. Um, <clears throat> A service like a moving, uh, a moving, uh, uh, a business like you help uh, someone move, like a mover, a truck, a muscle. Okay, okay. 
like relocation services? Uh, yes, yes, Professor, okay, yes. So do we do one campaign of relocation service, okay? But it's also called reload. So do we do in LinkedIn a campaign using maybe five keywords, reload, relocation, relocation service. And then there you can choose people who use this keyword in LinkedIn, but also people who have interacted with this keyword in the past, in the last six months. So they went to a, um, they read a, a profile, they read a posting at LinkedIn about relocation services. So they will see your ad too. Okay. Okay, okay Professor. Uh, one last question, Professor. Sure. What is the success rate for uh, the uh, relocation uh, keywords for like uh, doing it in digital marketing? What's the, what's the what? The what's the success rate? Uh, like, are we looking for more to be of the success uh, uh, scale or a successful scale or onto like a medium, moderate to failure scale? Ah, uh, you are asking about success rate? Yes. Oh, okay. very complicated issue. Uh, okay. Um, when I was at Axiom, mega corporation, we dealt with the largest company in the world. We dealt with all the major banks in the US, Chase, Citi, Wells, and so on. They were all clients. And we saw that it's really amazing. Two banks in the same market for the same product, like a credit card, have really different results. Um, we, did a, we dealt with a bank in Texas, really large bank, and they had a credit card offer. They get a credit card, bank in Texas, whatever. And their conversion rate was about 10%, whatever, something like that, okay? For Citibank in New York, the conversion rate was 40%, four times better. And even though everything else was pretty much the same. And what we realized, the stronger your brand is, the more people know you, the higher your conversion rate. A, for a little company, this is a really big problem. Until people know you, the conversions are not going to be terribly good. Um, and the big company, don't, they don't tell you. You hear, you look on the online, people say, what's a, what's a good conversion rate? Oh, 2%, industry standard. And everybody thinks, oh, okay, we, we have 3%, we're doing really good. Folks, 2% is pretty bad, okay? That's the industry standard. It's possible to get 5%, 10% or more. And 40% is totally possible, but they're not going to tell you that. The successful people are not going to say anything because they don't want to let the other one know that they get better conversion. So do the best you can and constantly push it up. Constantly try and try everything. Because we found out, we simply try everything possible and see what happens. And we try to think, we, we know that's not going to work. We try it anyway, sometimes it works. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Thank welcome. you. You're welcome. Okay. Let me see if there's um, more slides here. Okay. So we covered a slide about me. I wear a suit and tie every once in a while. <laughs> and then we talk about how we do the class, okay? The, we use Slack for conversation. You can ask questions during the week, anytime you like. Uh, everything's on, online. The videos, the classes, the PowerPoint, ebooks, everything's online. All the things we're going to cover, um, Google Ads, analytics, social media, content, and so on, email marketing, and so on. And then we did today's class was mostly around keyword research. Oh, and then, oh there's something about local search, but I put that until next time because we don't have time for that today. But if you have friends and family who have small businesses, like restaurants and so on, I'll show you how to do SEO for them really easy. And they'll be really happy. A friend of ours down in halfway down in LA, in a small town, she has a Chinese restaurant. She's been up for a long time. A friend of ours, my wife, Helen, she's Chinese. And so they were talking one day and my wife said, oh, Andreas, he'll fix your, he'll fix your SEO for you. <laughs> so I went online and I set up the, the local search for her.
and now she shows up number one in that town for dwell search for Chinese restaurant she's number one okay and so if whenever we drive to LA we can always stop there get and get lunch okay I'll show you how to do that really easy to do for friends family and so on okay hope that's a free lunch okay. and let's see what else um, ah, here's a list of one of the last slides all sorts of questions that people asked before do you more questions I'll stay on as long as you got like and answer questions can I, can I um, ask a question, Professor? Sure, of course. Yeah, um, I, I was wondering, uh, since you, you mentioned uh, web um, search engines around the world, um, th does that mean that the keyword uh, also gets translated automatically depending on the uh, demographic? No, <laughs> yeah, another complicated question. Okay, Google, when I was at Cisco, remember? 44 languages, 84 countries. We found out because I'm, I'm head of global SEO at Cisco, I could talk to Google. I talked to them, I found out there's not one Google. The Google US, Google Germany. Germans like really complex technical words. Long, complicated searches, that's what Germans prefer. Americans like short, easy words. So they're Google US, Google Germany, they're different. They, they, they give different results. So there's a different Google in each country. Then the next issue is Google considers English to be the universal keyword. So you can use English in any country. If I go to Japan and I search for pizza, I'll see keywords, I'll see search results that use the word pizza in the page, okay? But if I use Japanese, then I'll also see Japanese version for pizza but I will not see French or German, okay? So in Japan, Japan shows Japanese and English. English is the, global, the universal keyword, the, the universal language. So when you do a campaign for Japan for your product, you need to use, make sure you use English, but also use Japanese. For German, for German, use German and English, okay? So use local keywords for each language. Google will not translate for you. And I'll show you later how to tell Google. Um, you say, Google, okay, this page is English for the US. This page, this page is French for France, and this page is French for Switzerland, and this page is German for Germany. And that's a really easy way to put code in your page to tell Google which country, which language. Okay? Really uh, easy. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome. Great question. More questions? I'll tell you guys all the secrets, okay? <laughs> all the secrets from Cisco, from Google, from, from Facebook, YouTube. More questions? Not just keywords, digital marketing, Google in general, uh, Baidu, anything. Um, Silicon Valley. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, can I ask another question, Professor? Of course, unlimited. <laughs> like there's an app called the Google Trends. I don't know if you ever used it before, the Google Trends app. Oh yes. You also utilize that to uh, generate uh, keywords. Yeah, I, we, we covered that one here. Hey, Google Trends. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Be careful, with Google Trends. I use it. I don't use it for keywords to find keywords. I use it to get a, an idea of things, to see what's going on. But be very careful about the data. Um, here we see really easy words like cat, birds, and dogs. For most products, it's pretty easy to see the, the general trend over 14 years. We see, wow, birds went up. Um, turtles are not very popular. We see that. So Jose, you and I say, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna open a store about turtles. And really quickly we see turtles are not very popular, right? Much better, we open a, we open a store for dogs. 
much more popular. It gives us an idea. But the reason I'm using really unique, like sweater for dogs, it may not show up. Or um, when Mary talked about software for relocation uh, management for apps, it may not show up or it may give us bad data. So for a really small area, a niche market, a minor market, we may get bad data. Um, so it's a, it's a very general idea, like, wow, it's going up, it's going down, things like that. But be very careful with the data. You can, you have to do, like I showed you here, um, do actual test. Test, see real data. Here we find out Silicon Valley got 2,900 impressions, 2,700 impressions, incubator 900. This is real data. Uh, everything else, it just, just indicates a general idea, okay? Uh, thanks. On here, um, uh -huh. Google said 1.5 million, SEM Rush says 200,000. Whoa, that's a really big difference. Here, SEM Rush tells me 40 impressions per month. I'm only going to get 40 impressions. In reality, I got 500. It's not possible that I, myself, get 500, which is 13 times more than the total market, and only just one of maybe 20 or 30 competitors. So the data here is junk, okay? Oh, thank you, Professor. That very clar clarified it a lot, thank you. More questions? I was going to actually add a comment earlier when Mary asked a question uh, about yeah. uh, how to improve or what is the success rate. And I was going to add a comment that uh, marketing is a process and you have to refine your own process step by step based upon your own experience. So you use a certain keywords and see which one gives you the best bang of your buck and then keep on improving. Absolutely. It's, a, it's not a, a math that seven plus nine would always make 16. It could be seven plus nine could be th equivalent to three or 300. <laughs> It would be a different, number. for you and me, we have different numbers. Yeah. And the crazy thing is we're both right, okay? Yes. Um, marketing has been around for 150 years now, okay? Um, it's not a science. And it's a really complex field. And it, for some it works really well, for others it doesn't work. And you try things, some things tend to work better than other things, but it's really, it's really, um, it's very odd. It's not a science. Like uh, you build bridges, the bridge works or it doesn't work. But in marketing, uh, so many ways of doing it. And it's really, really odd. Really, it's fascinating in a way. With digital marketing in the last 20 years, now we have data for it. Before there was very little data. Now we, we really can see this works or doesn't work. You have to be very careful. We have misleading data. Although a lot of scientific tools are available now, which can make the life easier, but <laughs> it's, to, it's still not a science. It's a combination of intellect, art, and science. Yes. There's a lot of art to it. There's a yeah. lot of art to it. Um, data. The whole thing about statistics of data. Folks, the vast majority of people I know in marketing know, have no, no statistics at all. They have no idea about numbers. And this includes large corporations. I meet with 30, 40, 50 billion dollar companies. They have no idea about the numbers they're looking at. They cannot tell the difference between this number and that number. No, no statistic background. And I can show, it's not very difficult um, to learn this. It's pretty amazing. And that has been my experience as well, working with a number of companies. Some of you guys are engineers. You guys, 
really get in, really should help out here. When we talk about numbers, chip in. Talk about what you understand, how you understand engineering. I'm not an engineer. So I know about enough marketing, enough statistics that I can, that I can use, but I, I could learn a lot more. So if you guys can see how to apply engineering to this, it'd be great. Google themselves don't understand it very well. It's pretty amazing. Google doesn't understand very much the, the, the details of statistics in keywords. Uh, I see the trends, uh, that's pretty nice uh, place, even though the data is uh, weekly and also behind the maybe one week time frame. But uh, you really can see how the population going with a certain things. Uh, I look at like uh, uh, coronavirus, for example. Actually, uh, I, uh, even though the news is uh, pretty popular now, but actually the trend is down quite significantly from uh, late April. So actually the reality for people feel might be slightly different because general public, you know, yeah. That's a good example, Corona. The fast, fast moving, I, four months ago, nobody used the word Corona. It, it, it came really fast. And before we said Corona, now we say COV-19. The word has changed in the last, in the last month. Yeah. And the meaning of the word is evolving. Um, it's changing really rapidly. Uh, Google blocked it for a long time because there were so many spammers and so on. Um, so it's evolving. Yeah, uh, another thing, uh, actually the word I'm looking for, you know, last year has this uh, AMD, a company making this uh, computer chips uh, come out a very popular product. But uh, a lot of the comments uh, is a quality issue. Uh, the performance issue is not as great as people think because it produces a lot of heat. So I take a look at the, the search engine trend. Actually, it is popular. So I think that's a respond much faster with the old statistics because the is update weekly is the real happening in the society, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's a very good idea for a lot of, I mean, that chart of trend really give a lot of thing you may not be aware, you can take a look at, yeah. Yeah, but so the whole area in data marketing, what to do with the bad news about your product what to do with the, when the CEO gets arrested? <laughs> we see that quite a bit. Or the, the bad, the bad information about the CEO, or a bad review comes out. There's a lot of digital marketing how to deal with that. A lot of PR, um, the big issue. And also, um, things like um, the Chinese. That's evolving really rapidly. How to deal with keywords in Chinese in the, the U.S. market. Um, also, the, compl the complexities of the issues around um, showing in Baidu in, the, in China and in search engines in the U.S. You guys know the Chinese here know that keywords are blocked in China or Google is blocked in China. How to deal with that? Mm. Oh, I just uh, compared uh, between Trump and uh, Biden. I think the Trumpers' popularity is significantly higher than the Biden. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty nice, so. Let's stay away from politics, but. No, I mean, just the name, just the name. But. Uh, yeah, nothing, uh, but the, I don't know what's really, but the, just the, the, like, uh, I think the search engine is trying to track people whatever positive, negative, whatever they come out, isn't it? It's just a trap, certain kind of war, yeah. I look at Trump and Biden, push aside the personal politics side. I look at Trump and Biden, I look at their digital marketing. And whether you like Trump or not like him or whatever you think of him, his digital marketing is absolutely phenomenal. It's yeah. super good. It's astonishing how good his team is. They are, not just 10 times better than Biden. Um, the Trump team, they're spending close to a billion dollars. They have maybe 200 people working on their team just for digital marketing. The Biden people, 
0.5 people. That's it. For Trump, we know who he is. The, the, the head of it, Brad Parscale. We all know that. We know a lot about him personally. Who's doing big digital marketing for, for Biden? Nobody knows. So nobody. So well, yesterday I was really surprised to find out after Facebook's announcement that if Facebook would have taken the step they took yesterday, if they would have taken that same step four years back, Trump would have lost the election. That's a pretty big claim. You know? oh, yeah. And 